So I want to read Isaiah chapter 43, uh, verses 18 and 19. And this was a text that we read uh, last week. It says, Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Everybody say a new thing. A new, a new thing. thing. I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And, and even as I was going this week, I really sensed that the Lord was speaking to me, get that in your heart, that I want to do a new thing, that when things seem impossible, when, when there seems to be obstacles or, or things in the way, I can do the impossible. I, if I'm for you, who can be against you? And so God is wanting us to step into this new life that he's making available to us today. And so we're going to continue to talk about a brand new life. And today I want to talk about living in promise, that we are to be a people as believers we are to be people that live in the promise of God. And so God's intent has always been for people to inherit the promise that he's made available to them. Can you imagine God making a gift available and we're like, oh, that's cool, but we never actually open it, right? And, and a lot of pe believers get to a point in life where, where God's made a gift available, but we never go and open it or, or go in to take possession of that gift or that promise. But he doesn't just want us to know the promises that he's made available. He wants us to be a people that inherit the promises. I think a lot of times we get stuck in the thinking that, well, it's in the Bible, and if God wants to do it, he'll just do it. But how many of you know that's not, that's not the way it works? All the promises that he's made available, they're available to every believer, but they're not automatic. We actually have to take possession of them and begin to, to walk those things out. And so I want to read out of Joshua chapter 1, starting at verse 1. It says, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon I have given you, as, as I said to Moses. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you or forsake you. And so we read this, and the, the people of Israel, up to this point, they had been wandering in the wilderness, right? For 40 years, they've been wandering. But how many of you guys know it was never God's intent just to get his people out of Egypt? It was never his intent to just get them out of slavery. He wanted to get them out of bondage, out of slavery, and into a place called promise. There was a place of promise that he had for them. And so it was God's intention to get them into the place of promise. And I believe that a lot today, a lot of people are stuck in the wilderness. They get stuck in the transition and we actually make do in the wilderness, but we never step into the full promise that God made available to us. How many of you guys know there is a place of promise for your life? Did you know that? Mm -hmm. That God has promises available to you. And they are promises for fruitfulness, promises for favor, promises for blessing, promises for really reigning in life. I love the scripture in Romans 5, 17. It says, how much more, it says, how much more those who receive abundance grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through Jesus Christ. If you are a believer, we are to reign in life. We're not just to make it. We're not just to survive. We're not just to trudge through life and get through it, right? We're to reign. There's, there's a reigning that's to happen. Thank you. Amen. <laughs> and so if we aren't reigning in life, not that there won't be obstacles. There will be obstacles. And that usually means you're on the right track. That means you're usually trying to take territory. But there is to be a reigning, a success, a I'm with you sense, a you are victorious in my name sense. And so notice it says, every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you. The promise for your life is a gift of God. He has gifts available to everyone, to every believer. He has made gifts available. And so he wants us a people that don't just settle for getting out of bondage, but to be a people that step into the promise. And so I want to talk real quick. Did you have anything you wanted to say? No, I was just letting you know where I know, we're, we're, at. we're cooking. So to, I want to just talk about what it takes to be a people that walk in the promise. What does it take to be a people that walks in the promise that God's made available to us? Number one, we have to have eyes that see. You have to see the promise, right, before you can inherit it. You know, it, it, when, you, when you have vision from God, you have eyes that see in your spirit farther than your eyes can look. When you look in your eyes, 
a lot of times we see obstacles, we see tensions, we see difficult situations or, or all the issues. But when God gives you vision in your spirit, how many of you guys know you can see further? That's right. You can see past those issues and into the good things that God's made available to us. Eyes that look are common, but eyes that see are rare. A lot of people are able to look, but God's calling us to be a people that see the promise that he's made available. Amen? When I think about that, I think about the, the 12 spies that Moses sent out, right? He sent them out to go see the land. And 10 of them came and had eyes that look. They looked at the giants. They looked at the walls of the fortified cities. They looked at all the problems, but two of them had eyes to see. And I want to be a people that sees the promise that he's made available to us. So God wants us to see where he wants us to go. Amen? Amen. So say, I want to have eyes that see. I want to have eyes that see. Number two, we need to be a people that places our feet in the place of promise. There is something that happens when we go out and we place our feet in the place of promise. He says in verse three, every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you. There's something that happens it, when things seem illogical, when things seem impossible, when things seem like it's not going to work out. When you go to the place of promise and you are saying, God, I want what you want in my life. I want to see your promise come to pass. When you go to the place, all of a sudden your eyes are open. You start seeing things happening. And what happens? Faith rises, right? Faith rises. And it's, all of a sudden it's like, whoa, this isn't about all those issues that I was thinking in my head. Now that I'm here, I'm seeing how the Lord wants to move and how he wants to take this. And so that's what we're going to do today is we want to, our prayer for you, we've been praying, we've been, we've been fasting, we've been doing all these things because we really believe that number one, God wants to give us eyes that see, but number two, that as we go and place our feet in, in the place of promise, he's saying, I will release things. I will show you the things that I want to do in you and through you. Amen? Yeah, and so we're, we're here at Thomasville, and if you've spent any numerous amounts of time with us, you know, right now, this is the current property that we are in conversation about. This is it. Um, we, there's not necessarily a, a plan B. Um, literally in the city, there is not really a plan B. And we are one of many churches who want to be in the city, which is awesome. Isn't that great that people want to come right. here? Um, and one of the biggest obstacles that you would, across the board, ch most churches are facing, are property build, are, are, are building a property. And so as we're here, what this really represents and signifies is, is a building that we are believing for a building. Um, hey, can you hold that for me? Yeah, sorry. sorry. Um, and so it, but we really know that it goes beyond a building. There's like 575 apartment units just here at the fountains across the street. I think 576, I have it written somewhere, is, is how many buildings are here. Um, there's like over 6,000 kids under the age of 18 in this, in, in this Fitchburg area as a whole. Um, it goes beyond a building. But mm -hmm. as we step here, there, at some point, you just got to start stepping out and say, we want to take our feet to a place where God has called us and to walk into those places of promises he's, he's, he's laid out for us. When they went out, when they went out to go see, they, they saw a space, but what they were actually seeing, the two people who saw, were God's promises, God's words, God's faithfulness that he had already declared. And so that's what this is all about. As we're here, that we're looking at, it's not just a building, right? Um, whether the owner chooses to sell or not, this building is actually not for sale. Um, and we've just been in conversation with him like, hey, we need your building. Um, are you going to sell it? Um, and so to any smart businessman. The time is now. <laughs> yep, any smart businessman, right? He's, he's about, I was even thinking about this this morning. He's about investments. He's about money. And it's not even a like shame on him thing. That's what he does. That's that's what he, that's who he is, and yet here we are. And I thought, well, I'm in the business of people and Jesus and healings and hope, and that's the business I, I'm in. So how do we bring those two things together? Because I'm not asking him to surrender who he is, but you guys know I'm not surrendering what God's asked us to do either. And so at some point, something's got to give. And so today's really as we are stepping our feet here, it really is saying, all right, we're gonna put our feet in a place of promise, which is this city, which is, and I really believe that as we forget, I keep saying this, as we figure out how to, to minister and to um, meet the needs and to be a church in this community, as we do this well, it will only be a matter of time that that snowballs into something greater um, in the surrounding areas. Because we know that this is only one of many cities. There's only like 29,000 people that live in Fitchburg alone. That's a lot of people. 
We need, we need lots of churches, not just our church. And so we want to be able to have this to be a time where we're able to walk these things out and allow God to speak and stir in our hearts our part that we can bring. Because Jay and I know it's not just what Jay and Susie can bring, but the components that you guys bring as a body. And so as we begin to walk, we're going to go ahead and we're going to be walking down. Um, we'll, we'll lead the way. We're going to walk through uh, the King James neighborhood. That's where we do a lot of our ministry. That's where we do Chalk the Block right now. Um, that's where we do our outreach. And it's because that's where we have relationship. And when you don't have a place, you just kind of start wherever. That's where we're at. So we're going to walk down there. And during that time, what we want you guys to be doing, we want, you guys can be talking, but we want you guys to be praying and asking the Lord, what do I need to be seeing? What are they not seeing? Um, because we know that we don't see everything, right? I can only see a little bit, but I can't see fully what's behind me. Um, and that's why it's so important to be a body is because he's gifted us all so differently. And so we need your part. We need your portion. We need to hear what do you think the Lord's saying and allow us to work through those things um, and so we can begin to move forward. I think it was Jack Hafer that I recently heard um, say, you know, when he was moving, his, they were doing some stuff with their church. He said, you know, I feel like we need to get the hell out of Van Nuys. And what he was saying was that all of those demonic forces, all of those things that were pushing back, that's what they were ready to go after. And so what we want to begin to say is, all right, what our eyes need to be seen we don't need to be witch hunting for stuff right but he wants to show us what the keys to this city are so as we unlock these this city we'll begin to get the keys into other cities and we'll begin to bring the kingdom of God to those places so as we walk we want to encourage you guys to just be having a conversation um, be obedient to what you you know even if you're like that seems random and weird write it down put it in your phone don't let this time pass because this time we believe is like no other and we don't want to be like the, the people when Jesus was riding in and what were they looking at? Oh, they were saying he was a king, but what was he really there to be? He was there to be their savior. They missed the time. They missed who he was. We don't want to miss this season. We don't want to miss what the Lord is doing in this because our eyes are focused somewhere else. We want to tune in. And we know you guys are some awesome people. We say this all the time. The people that we have at Chapel Valley are the people you want to go to battle with. The, you guys are the people that we are so privileged and honored to serve and to love and to go shoulder to shoulder with because you guys are contending for the things of God. And so we just want to say thank you, but let's, as we walk, let's begin to uh, begin to see what the Lord stirs in you. Um, we're going to walk down King James and then right about, um, you'll see where there's going to be a park. We're going to actually going to, um, we're going to stop in that area and then we'll go to our next point. A park it used to be a building, but they tore that down and they are going to be putting a park here. And so that's where we're going to spend our next time together. Do you want to say anything? Stats or anything? Uh, I think, I don't know if I'll do it here or at the other side. Okay. You can keep going. Well, I just wanted to read out of Psalms chapter uh, 37 verse 4. It says, Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. And I used to read that and think that, you know, well, basically whatever I'm passionate about or whatever I like, God's going to do that in my life if I follow him. But what I actually have come to realize is that as I delight myself in the Lord, he actually changes my desires to match his. Have you guys noticed that? Yeah. That as you really press into him and really are about his business, that the things that you cared about before aren't as significant as they once were. Isn't that true? And so the what I want to talk about is the the to be a people that walk in promise, it actually takes a people that cultivates passion. That as we delight ourselves in the Lord that he puts delights in our hearts, that he puts passion in our hearts. It is so critical to be passionate about what God has called you to do. If you don't cultivate passion, if you don't let God sow that into your life, how many of you know it takes passion to pray? It takes passion to, to press in and, and to fight the battles. It takes, it takes passion to, to get on your knees in the middle of the night and, and to pray and to seek the Lord. It, it takes passion to release faith, right? You have to be passionate about, about the things that God has called you to do in order to inherit the promise. And so it takes passion to endure in the wilderness. It's easy to get stuck in the wilderness because you know what? The wilderness, you can get used to it. You can get comfortable. You can say, you know what, I can actually make this work, right? That, isn't that what happened with the people of Israel? They're out in the wilderness and they're like, you know, we can't take that land. You know, we're doing okay for ourselves here. It's easy to get stuck in transition when there's a lack of passion for the hope that's been set before us. And as we, as we walked this, 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 this street, it's about a 10-minute walk that we just did. But there's a, 
passion that I'm praying that is stirring in each one of you for the lost, for the broken, for those that don't know the Lord, and that, that they would come to know who he is and really the full life that he's made available to them. The life that he's made available to you, he, he's made that available to others as well. And we're to be a people with passion that intercedes, a passion that re makes requests, a passion that fights battles, a passion that stands up for injustice. And so there's, there's a passion that is required. And it, it takes passion to endure change. How many of you guys know that in order to inherit the promise, things have to change? Isn't that true? That sometimes if we get comfortable in the change, we just get stuck there and we never actually go into the change. But God actually has to bring change for us to inherit promise. There's two types of change. There's change that happens outside, externally. Did you know that God fights for you? And then as you're pressing into him, he is arranging things for you to inherit. He's arranging situations. He's fighting battles on your behalf. He's bringing change externally, but there's also change that he has to do internally. There's change that has to happen in us. The person that you are today is not good enough to inherit the promise that he has for you tomorrow. You have to change. And it takes passion to endure that because change is not comfortable. Change is not easy. Change is not convenient. To change, it takes passion that comes from him. So as we delight ourselves in the Lord, he puts, he deposits desires. He deposits passion into our hearts that overcomes whatever comes against us in this life. Amen? Amen. I, I, so I was listening to what you were saying. I wasn't even thinking what I was going to say. I was just staring at you like, oh, that's good. You know, <laughs> it's, it's super easy with us not having a building to just be a part of our life Monday through Saturday, right? Like you're just kind of disconnected. And again, this whole idea is to get you in part where we decided we have to start doing something. We can't wait until we get a building. You don't prepare for marriage like the day you say I do, right? right. When do you prepare for marriage? All beforehand. Now, some people might think you prepare for a wedding. The wedding is actually not the most, it's great, it's wonderful, it's, me it's filled with wonderful memories. But the most important thing is what? the marriage and this is what this whole time is about is we can say like oh when we get in a building a building a building that that building really is just the wedding right. what we're wanting to prepare for is the marriage the marriage of, of being in a community what does that look like that's why we come and we show up what usually once to twice a week we pick up trash here we we came and it's not a like patting on my back that's not what i'm saying any of this about the idea is we're we're setting the foundation now and getting in a community now getting to know the neighbors that are in here um our the, the staff that comes that runs through there know people in here that i don't even know yet they know us the funny thing is if you ask anyone if you say you're with luma that's how they know us. They know us by oh, our youth group. You're with Luma. They yeah. know Chapel Valley by Luma. They have no, I, I had a conversation with someone and I, I was always saying on oh, Chapel Valley, Chapel Valley. And all of a sudden at the end of our conversation of having multiple conversations, she looks at me. I've met her plenty of times and she goes, wait a minute, you're with Luma? Oh, I know. Why didn't, and I'm like, oh my goodness gracious. You know, how many conversations? Why? Because they, they've, they've created a presence. And we're not just creating a presence of being just familiar. They're bringing the, the presence of Jesus to this place. You know, I, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about this when we go to, um, to the next area where we kind of look at the city. Um, but here's what the, the, the thing is. There are, there are problems. There are, there are issues. There are, um, you know, struggles that community is facing. And the answer is what? Jesus. It's Jesus. And who do we have dwelling in us? Yeah. Jesus. Jesus. We don't have necessarily the answers. There's no quick fixes to any city. That's as I've had many conversations, that's what I've realized. There's not a quick fix to any city. However, we have the answer. And right. what he wants to do is he wants to utilize where we are, the community where we are, to bring those answers, to facilitate those answers, to drop those things in our spirit that we would come to meetings, that we would come to the playground, that we would come to the park, and we would begin to share those things. And what would we be sharing? Jesus, right? And so this is really what, what, is, what this is all about. In June, there's going to be a, a park that's going to be put here. And what some awesome opportunities with some grills and a basketball court. What I see when I, when I hear that, oh my gosh, I just think what, a, what an opportunity to be plugged in. And we played kickball here in this part, in this area here. We, we've not let there not be in a space. When they created this space, when they took out, we're like, 
Finally, we have a place that's not in the street. We were, we were happy right in this, but we're not settling for that. There's a park that's coming that comes with opportunities. That's what this is about. How did we get passionate about this area, about the city? We just spent time in the city. And we began to show, have the Lord stir in us and, and give us eyes to see things that only he can see. And so, yeah, that's all I got to say so, for right now. So right now we've been, we're talking about a people that w lives in promise. It takes eyes that see. It takes us walking and putting our feet in the place of promise. And it takes passion, right? That's what we've talked about so far. So can we just pray real quick? And then we're going to walk back and just continue to pray. Continue to let the Lord show you things, speak things to you. We'd love to hear about that. Before you leave, though, you're, don't get in your car and just drive away. We have a map and an audio CD that we want to give to every car, okay? That can make sure that you get to the right places and that, that we're uh, continuing to cast this vision as we drive. So Father, we thank you that in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you are opening up spiritual eyes today. Lord, that you are, as we walk in the place of promise, Lord, that, that there is things that you are speaking, that there are things that you are releasing beyond what we can imagine, beyond what we can come up on our own. And so, Father, we thank you, Lord, for the things that you are showing us, for the things that you are releasing, for the resources that are being let, released, for the blessing that is being poured out, for the healing that is, that is coming right around the corner. We thank you, Lord, that as we walk faithfully, passionately about your business, Lord, that you are right there with us lord that as we rise up lord that you are rising right with us yes. we thank you lord that you are with us and father we pray that your will would be done in this city in fitchburg in madison in verona and sun prairie lord in the greater madison area lord let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven in jesus name amen, amen. amen. this is actually considered downtown fitchburg this is what they are saying is the, it's just right now the only side that's built is this side um, but they are going to be building that whole other side of Fitchburg that's going to be neighborhoods and shops and stores that's going to all be built up. And so this is what they are designating as downtown. This is downtown. So this is the Agora Pavilion at the Fitchburg Center. If you look behind you, that's the Fitchburg Police Department. You can, see, what a, you can see a white, if you're, well, from where I'm at, you can see a white back of a car. That's actually like a trooper type of yeah. car vehicle. That's the entrance for where we do full and focus. So when we're dropping off meals, that's where we go. We go to the Pittsburgh Police Department right there. They have actually, they invited us, the whole church, to come and take a tour if we wanted. I, I, didn't, like, I didn't follow up with them. We were like, we don't know if we have time for that. So, um, but they, they w love what we're doing. They, and they were the ones. The they well, don't I think have, they the, have a holding cell. They have a holding cell there. They take everyone downtown. That's yeah. where everyone gets booked. It goes downtown. But they they contributed the the police bags and such, and so we're gonna just go through and kind of share some statistics here in a moment. I did want to look. Um, we've talked about walking in the promise. The fourth thing that it takes to walk in the promise is to advance courageously. Right? We talked about just coming from passion, but how many of you guys know God is always moving us forward? Did you know that? It says in Proverbs chapter four verse eighteen, the path of the just is like the shining sun that shines ever brighter unto the perfect day. Our life as we go, how many of you guys know, it's supposed to become even more radiant. Yes. We're to become more and more bright, shining brighter and brighter. And so his destination and where he's leading us, it's greater than where we've been. Amen. It's, it, it's better, it takes more, and so he's calling us to shine brighter. And, and we talked about how opposition can be a sign that you're in the right direction. Something I, I tell a lot, our interns all the time, or just really anybody, is if you're comfortable, you're probably not following close enough. If you are comfortable in life, you need to get a little closer to following the Lord. Because where he takes you will always require more than what you have. And it, it leads you to a place of uncomfortability. And so it says, we just read in Joshua chapter 1, it says, No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Well, what does that point out? That there's going to be opposition. That as you are going to inherit the, the promise, there's opposition. There's battles that are to be fought. There's things that are going to come against. But notice what God's promise is is no man will be able to stand. God gave Joshua a promise that as you are going to inherit this promised land, even though you're going to face opposition, I've already given you the outcome of what it will be. No man will be able to stand before you. Amen? Amen. So God's calling us to advance courageously. There's things that are set in place that seem too big to handle. There's governments, there's politics, there's um, mind conditions and thought patterns. Those all seem th like things like, well, I can't do anything. How many of you guys know it's not us fighting? God's fighting for us and we are advancing courageously. So we've talked about having eyes that see. 
You have to have eyes that see. We've talked about setting our, our feet in the place of promise, right? We've talked about um, cultivating passion, and we're also to advance courageously. Can you hold that? All my notes are written down. All right, so I asked, the, I asked just sent the email, what are, kind of are their top three issues that they see within the community and what, they, what the response, so I asked the police, that's they. And um, the things that they saw, they saw as some of their main issues, kind of not just in Fitchburg, but um, the surrounding communities. So mental health issues being one of them. And not just mental health issues, but resources to assist those with mental health issues. Domestic violence, um, homelessness and poverty, and then drugs, so heroin, heroin um, if you watch the news, um, heroin is a, is a pretty big deal right now, and then opiate abuse. I didn't really, I didn't ask for it. We, we're going to meet to talk about this stuff soon, hopefully. Um, but those are kind of the, the big things that, that the cities are facing. Um, and then last night, I just sat down and I was like, okay, what's the Fitchburg I see? And I just started writing words. And so when I think about it is, you know, I see a, a city that's engaged. Um, because when a city is engaged, when people are involved, um, a lot of these things become non-issues because people are engaged. Families are engaged. They're paying attention to their children. Their kids um, are able to come home to someone being there versus maybe coming to a home that has no one there. Or they're coming home to a home that has food that maybe not necessarily doesn't have food. Homelessness, you know, what I learned recently isn't um, just people sleeping on the streets because that's when I grew up, that's what I perceived as homelessness. That's what I saw um, on Skid Row, all around, was just people everywhere. Well, we know that homelessness can't develop into that just by the nature of where we live. But homelessness is someone, um, you know, if Jay and I had a bad luck at things and uh, we're down and out and now we're living with David and Taylor as a family, that we would actually be considered homeless because our family is with someone that's not a part. They're just, they're homey, they're, you know, housing us. So homelessness actually shows up in lots of ways like that in families where young kids don't have a place to live. So they're living with people who aren't family. Um, and then they would be considered homeless. Um, so I saw a Fitchburg that's engaged, a, a Fitchburg, a city that's unified, um, that is actually figuring out how to work together. As Jay was mentioning with government and politics, there's so many minds and agendas and, you know, we've just kind of went through the ringer with politics nationally, but that happens at a local level too. Um, and so I just think that if we could figure out how to begin to bring the different facets of the government to work together and be unified, a lot of these things would begin to go away, which seems very intimidating to me because when you look around again, you're like, how can you get two people from different sides of the parties working together? But this is what I said, okay, this is a Fitchburg I see, and they're a unified Fitchburg. Um, a clean Fitchburg. You know, we, um, a lot of these places, and we, if you drove the route, you know, as we were coming through and we passed through past off Post Road, a lot of those apartment complexes, there's not managers who are tending, and, uh, you know, I'm not trying to push anything, but if your management's not here, how do you keep an area clean? How do you keep people engaged to invest in a community and take pride in it? So I had in there a clean Fitchburg, um, a, a city that I see that's filled with hope. Um, like I said, we know Jesus is the answer, and um, I believe he wants to begin to show us those things. So the Fitchburg I saw was a, a people that were filled with hope, um, that were encountering Christ, and then that's where their hope lied. Um, a city that's growing, we know that the city and many cities around us are growing rapidly, but that it would continue to grow in healthy components. And then a Fitchburg I see is resource and resourcing. And so I know that our heart as just as pastors is to not just have a place, but be a resource for other people, um, that that would actually be true of the city as well. And then last, the two things were free and whole. Um, in Romans chapter uh, 5, verse 17, it talks about, in that whole place, it's talking about how life in Adam and, and how we were doomed by one man's choice, basically. He keeps, you know, they keep saying that. You're kind of doomed by one man's choice, but one man was the one that brought hope for everyone else. And there's that comparison of grace that's available, that when Jesus died for us, we were brought into, we have the available to be brought into right standing with him. That's what I see when I see a city is that we're beginning to preach that gospel. And now there's hope and there's people who are living free um, from the bondages that have them entangled, that they're free because that's made available to everyone, no matter what they struggle with, no matter where they found themselves, that promise is still true. There's hope and freedom in Christ. And so I had, I would see um, a free and whole, whole city. Um, so as our church, I believe it's our responsibility to bring Jesus um, as the answer. Um, and that needs, he needs a people who are willing to go out and um, be tuned in to him first. Not our own agendas, not even what we think it needs to be, but so tuned in to him that we can bring those answers to people. 
Um, and so I just think that as we're, as we're dreaming that those are things that um, he, he's calling us, he, he wants to meet the needs. We know that as you read the Bible, we have a responsibility to the widow, to the, to the poor, um, to the orphans. We actually have a responsibility as a church. But until we can begin to see things like he sees them, it'll be out of our own resources. And that's not what he calls us to do. He wants to resource us as a church to be that answer for those people, to bring wholeness. Um, and I, I think a long time ago, we were meeting at Eagle School, which is around here somewhere. I'm directionally challenged all the time, but it's somewhere in the it's city. Back there. Um, and, you know, I talked about what does a modern day orphan look like? What does a modern day widow look like? And really, those are the single moms. Those are the kids that don't have families. Those are the kids that are in foster systems. Those are the kids who um, are literally left to kind of just raise themselves. That's today what it would look like in our, in our culture because we don't have orphanages, right? Um, but we have so many kids in foster systems, kids that are waiting to be adopted, kids that need Jesus. And we, the church, can bring, be the answer to some of those physical needs. Um, but I believe that, that he wants to stir those things in in us. And if, if we're breathing and you're here, then he's not done with you. And some of you, you might be at just at the beginning. You might be towards the middle of things. Um, but he, he wants to say those resources of what only you can bring, um, that he wants to begin to get us moving. And um, it's going to, as Jay was talking about, cultivating the passion in us. I can't cultivate passion in people, right? That, that's between you and the Lord and getting before him and be continually saying, let me see like you see. Let me hear the only what you would say. That's how the passion begins to get stirred in us is that we begin to get so plugged into the source that he begins to stir those things up and we see things like he has them for us. So we need a team of people um, who are looking to cover each other, to love each other, and to, to unite so that we can freely move. Um, that we could come as one. And because when there's unity, you know there's nothing that can stop it. We read it in the Bible, right? When they came together and they were in one accord, th then the Holy Spirit moved. It wasn't when they were in, when they had all of the right circumstances. It was when they were in one accord and working together. And that's why we wanted to be on this journey together is so that you guys can begin to see and, and get it. And, and, you know, when I, every time I walk up to, to, the, to the police station, everything inside of me gets so nervous because it's such a daunting i mean you know the police chief said the other day we put on the pants our pants the same way you do and i said yes i know you do but still um but it's such a daunting thing there's something more that is represented there um than just um yeah. than, than just the the, the, the police exactly officer what, what that they don't it's a it's a old skit oh um so just a quick few uh Statistics. So, like I said, the city of Fitchburg is about 29,012 people. I'm not a numbers person, and so numbers kind of when they're trying to show me stuff. I, so if I'm wrong, I may be wrong, but I think I read this right. The average income in Fitchburg is about $64,000, $65,000 plus, but 15.4% of people live in poverty. So just think about that. There's still a portion of people that are living in poverty despite there being a medium income of $65,000. Um, there's 12.4 people who are without health insurance, um, and there's about 1,008 veterans that live in the city of Fitchburg. And, and the reason that those numbers are important is oftentimes veterans are, are the ones that oftentimes have some mental health issues, and just and not saying that they're all mentally like ill or anything like that, but there is a traumatic situation that vets go through that come and serve our country, and there's 1,800 or 1,008 vets in this city. And so why is poverty, why is health insurance? Jesus is the healer, he's the resourcer. And so when I see those numbers, I hear an opportunity to, to minister healing. He heals today, he provides today, he, he, right? And so when I think about, he says, in even greater works that you would do, I mean, Peter found money in a fish's mouth, come on. And it's not like, let's just, I, the Lord is resourceful. There's people who are in poverty, and, and depending on where you are in the CD, if, as you're listening, is as a church, we've always, the Lord's always come through, we've, we've always had enough for what we're doing. And so why not continue to believe him for right. more opportunities, and then allow him to continue to provide for those opportunities. Um, in Fitchburg, the average age is about 31.92, so a, a younger community, despite it being an older, an older community. Um, uh, some demographics, 65% are white, 
10% um, are black, 5% are Asian, 17% are Hispanic, and 3% are other race. Versus in Dane County as a whole, Dane County as a whole statistics has 84.7 whites and 5.9 Hispanics and 5.2 uh, black people. So just think about that in comparison. Fitchburg has 17 Hispanics, 3% other race, 5% Asian, 10% African Americans or blacks. This is a cultured place for only being 29,000 people. And, and what an opportunity. You know, I know that um, the Christ, Christ Memorial, the Church at Christ Memorial, they always talk about the Bhutanese com community that's out here, um, the Nepali people that are out here, and that there's, there are the nations are here. And that's what we're called to do is to go make disciples and go out into all the nations. And so we have an opportunity to reach people here, to go to places we can't go. Isn't that awesome? It's really a, a great, a great time. So what does this all represent? What does this all represent? All of these numbers represent uh, families, people, and community. This represents an opportunity that we have to do something unique through us. It doesn't make us special. It just means that we're saying, all right, Lord, our ears are open. What do you want to do through our church? That he's positioned us in a place where we have conversations with people that um, are, are that right now we have an attention with different people in various places of influence in this city. I hope that we wouldn't just let this time pass, but that the Lord would continue to stir something with you and you would continue to pray with us passionately, passionately, passionately. If your child was on the death on a deathbed, you would pray passionately, wouldn't you? You would stop all you were doing. You would probably quit your job to be by the bedside. And it's not a shame thing. What he's just saying is, hey, wake up. Because there's people who are, whose lives are at stake and what he's calling us to do is to contend and pray for those people as if they were our children. Not treat them as children, but pray for them. Because I think when you kind of have that idea of a mother and a child, there's something so passionate there about your kids. You want nothing but the best for your children. Well, God wants nothing but his best for his, this community, for these people, for these veterans, for these people who are, who are living under poverty. He wants, he wants the best for them. And so what he's calling us to do is to come before him get beyond get on our knees and we would passionately pray that God's will would be done here on earth as he desires amen. it to be done in yes. heaven amen yes. amen yes. That's all I got. yeah so um, if you were listening to the CD at the end of the CD is a song that I would encourage everybody to listen to um, Johnny and Sarah Griffiths who are, are the missionaries that that visited our church and they're in uh, they're in London right now um, they were just praying for us uh, a couple weeks ago, and they, they really were feeling that this was a song for our church. And it's the Do It Again by Elevation Worship. It's on their newest CD. And so we, we've included that at the end of the CD. So really soak in that um, as we've been doing this whole, this whole week. It, he, his, uh, the other word he sensed was he said, I, I'm getting the sense that God's saying, I will build my church. We've been talking about yes. that a little bit, haven't we? Yes. And so uh, he's building his church, and he wants to do something through through his people and so listen to that cd i'm gonna have you pray um just those words that I, I believe that a lot of those words that you were speaking over the city you see a city that's this oh. that this is this is this has been deemed as the center of the of the city uh, and as seen by the government and that we can actually release those things into the atmosphere and so can we just uh pray for the city at this time is that everybody good with that yes so let's pray together and let's believe in faith Oh, Lord, we thank you for your goodness you, and your faithfulness, God. We thank you that um, you have us on this journey. And um, I'm reminded right now of, of a word that you gave me last week about the road to amen is not straight. And, Lord, I, I believe that this, that even this today um, has been nothing but um, ordinary. But, God, I believe in Jesus' name that you're stirring our hearts yes. to a new level of passion, God. You, Lord. Lord, I thank you that you would you would begin to give us, it says, that we would see as, as you see with your eye. Lord, I pray that we would begin to see a city that is engaged, God. Lord, that you would begin to give us dreams and vision of how to engage the city. Lord, that you that I see a city that is, is unified, Lord. Lord, that when there is unity, even amongst amongst people, God, that things can just move freely. So, Lord, we release right. unity in this yes. place, God. Lord, we pray in Jesus' name that we would be a people that would bring hope to the city, that we too would be filled with hope and affirmed by your promises that are in your word. Your word says that you never leave us or forsake us. Right. God, your word says that your word will not return void, but it'll go to do the very thing that it's been sent out to do. And so, Lord, those are the words that we cling to that fill us 
with hope, that we can minister hope to people all around us in Jesus' name. Yes. Lord, we thank you that this city is a, a fruitful city that is growing economically, Lord, with the residents, God. Lord, we thank you that this city would continue to grow and, and be a city that you've created and designed it to be, a, to, that would be a place on the map, Lord, that would be fruitful, Lord, that there would be growth here in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that as a church, that we would continue to be a church that is resource, but yes. Lord, that the intention of us being resource is to be resourcing to others. Yes. Lord, I believe that there's keys that you want to bring that we would help the city be resources in the places where they're overwhelmed, in the places that people are doing jobs that are not their jobs, Lord, that we would be a church in this place that would help be an answer because we have the answer in Jesus' name. Lord, and because we have the answer, Lord, then we would be a, a city that would be free and whole because of you, God. Lord, we thank you that you sent your son Jesus so that we could walk freely um, without condemnation, without sin, but walk freely into the, the, uh, the plan that you have for us, God. Lord, I pray that we would be a people that would capture that so that we could then minister that to other people in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for the favor that we have with the government. We thank you for the favor that we have with the police. We thank you for the favor we have with the uh, firefighters, God. Lord, we pray for favor with business owners, God, in Jesus' name. We pray for favor with community leaders in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray that you would open the way, God, that you would make a river, Lord, in the place where there seems to be no life. That, that, that water represents life. So, Lord, we declare that you would make a, a river of life for us, God, that you would make a road where there is no road in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you that it says, if you are for us, who can be against us, God? And so, Lord, we say that despite what happens to the left or to the right, God, we would continue to press forward into the promises that you have for us, God, not looking at what's around us, God, but knowing that you fight our battles, God, that we can sing praises because of who you are. We thank you for all of these things in Jesus' name amen. we pray. Amen. 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 There comes a point in every journey where you've done pretty much everything that you are able to do. And the only thing left is to pray, is to have fervent believing prayer, prayer that gets results and really prayer that opens doors that no man can close. Amen. Amen. And so pray the doors open. And we've talked about this before, but prayer is the vehicle that brings his will from heaven to earth. And so when we pray that prayer, our Father who art in heaven, <coughs> we pray that prayer, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. How many of you guys know those prayers are important? That his will's not automatic. The Bible says the Lord, that God is willing that none should perish, but there are people perishing. And so he's looking for people whose hearts are his that are dedicating themselves saying, Lord, your will be done. What we're saying is, is pray the doors open. Let the windows of, o of heaven be opened and let his will be done here on earth. And so there comes a point where we've moved in passion. We've, we've gone through the process. We've, we've embraced the change, right? The difficult situations and the circumstances, right? But we are also to be a people that prays. Prayer that gets results. Fervent, believing prayer. Amen? Amen. And so that's what we want to end our time here doing today. But... Lives are, and we've talked about this, but lives are dependent on us being a people that inherit the promise. That, that the promise that God has put in your life, it doesn't end with you. That it is critical to other people inheriting the promise that God set for them. And so we can't allow ourselves to get content or comfortable in transition. We have to dust off our glasses, get our vision again. We have to go into the land of promise, right? We have to pray the doors open that no man can shut. If God is for us, who can be against us? Amen? Amen. And so we must move boldly into the places he has called us and trusting that he's faithful. Did you have anything you would like to add? So what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to pray, and then we're going to also go eat Mod Pizzas right behind us there. They are expecting us, and so they're ready, so they should be staffed. Um, but I'm going to have Pastor Tim close our time in prayer. Um, pastor Tim, this is my dad. He was the former pastor of Chapel Valley Church um, from 1991 to 2015, so for quite some time. He is now the district pastor overseeing Wisconsin, um, the churches in Wisconsin and in northern Michigan the Upper Peninsula, I believe, right? Yeah. And so he's just going to pray over us, and we're just going to receive that blessing. So go ahead, Laura. I'm, I'm coming to you. <laughs> uh, can I give a focus? To Number one grandson. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, so 
what I'm hearing is the idea about vision and seeing things as the Lord sees those things. I was praying for a person who was training missionaries and the Lord gave me a very vivid picture of me looking out over a sea of people and it was very hard for me to focus on them. I could kind of tell their ethnicities and the different uh, outfits they were wearing, that it was an international scene, but I, but I couldn't bring it into focus. So, but I knew that the Lord was standing behind me, kind of showing me this. So when I turned around to look at him, in his eyes, I saw the exact same scene, but everything was in perfect clarity. And so it was really not seen with effort, but seen through the eyes as the Lord sees. And, and that idea of vision is, Lord, we want to see what you see. And the other thing I would just quick add to that in 2 Samuel 5, King David is the Jebusites. The people who are possessing the Jerusalem area where the Lord's going to really set up uh, the center of the kingdom came out to fight David and so he saw, asked the Lord how, how do we approach this and the Lord showed him and then right away later they came out again and the Lord and David said should we go the same way we went last time and he goes no this way you're going to do it this way mm -hmm. and so the idea is that um, we're always open to how the Lord wants to do things. And it may be something we're familiar with, and maybe not, but it always comes down to, Lord, show us what you want us to see. And so my prayer for us, and the blessing on the food will be, Lord, show us what you want to see. So Father, I ask that yes. nothing is more wonderful than having divine eyesight. Mm -hmm. Nothing will change our hearts and move us in passion until we see like you see. And Lord, you were so good at that. You never looked past people. You saw them and you saw the will of the Father as you beheld them. So Lord, I ask, help Chapel Valley, help us to see with your eyes. Help us to have that focus and that clarity. Uh, birth passion continually, compassion. And then Lord, how would you have us, Chapel Valley, go forward and engage this community to set up your kingdom in the hearts of people. We ask that you would bring that to pass in us. I thank you for this tour today, Lord. It was just very wonderful and, and so well done. Um, pray that it would be like seeds planted in our hearts, producing a great harvest of fruitfulness. Yeah, amen. And then Lord, just ask that you would continue to bless our food and fellowship as nourishment to our body and soul in Jesus name. Amen. 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 All right, so let's just celebrate what the Lord's doing. Amen. amen. Mod pizza, enjoy. Um, we'll see you there. <laughs>